Monster Hunter World's weapon progression paths are much simpler than previous games, but there are some standout paths you may or may not notice. This guide series is going to focus on weapon upgrades to take you through low rank and high rank as painlessly as possible for each weapon type. Obviously, since we're talking about flying through the early game, we don't want to sit and farm monsters for days. You will need to farm a bit following these paths, but hopefully not too much. The majority of the parts also come from easier monsters, which should make progress fairly painless. You need to hoard everything you come across. If you see a mining node, hit it. Bone pile, take everything. The last thing you want to do is have to go randomly find some bones or minerals for an upgrade. Everything you gather will be useful, and you'll save time by gathering as much as you can along the way. Any questionable materials, I will be providing where to get them as we talk about the upgrades themselves. Bows and bow guns are in a unique spot. They are the only weapon types that can actively apply two or more status effects during a hunt. Bow guns use special bow gun ammo and bows have coatings. In general, for bows, we want to get access to these extra status effect coatings if possible. Otherwise, power coating is going to be the main focus for damage, but the extras will provide additional utility. The short answer for this guide is, make the Kuluyaku bow in the early game, and then the Tobi Kadachi bow and Legiana bow to mid to late game, and finally, the Nergigante and Diablos bows for end game. Now, for the long answer. The iron bow one we start with is actually pretty good. Make sure to gather iron ore from mining nodes during the first set of quests to upgrade your iron bow 1 to an iron bow 2 as soon as possible. You will use this for the first set of large monsters, including Great Jagras and the Kuluyaku. If you're lucky, after the first hunt with the Kuluyaku, you'll have the required 1 Kuluyaku Beak, 2 Kuluyaku Hides, and 3 Kuluyaku Scales to upgrade your Iron Bow 2 into a Kulu Arrow 1. You'll want to abuse the Paralysis, Sleep, and Blast coatings with this bow. Unfortunately, it does have low damage and does lose the ability to use power coatings, but it's not a huge deal because Blast coatings deal so much damage in low rank. Make sure to check the combo list and bring materials to combine additional coatings for longer and harder hunts. Being able to have a second set of 20 Blast coatings can pay dividends. Always have a stock of Parashrooms on you to make additional Paralysis coatings, Sleep Herbs to make Sleep coatings, and Fire Herbs to make Blast coatings, and 99 empty files to put them in. Since we have Sleep coatings with this bow, we definitely want to abuse a technique known as Sleep Bombing. This this involves putting a monster to sleep and then dropping barrel bombs at its weak points, most commonly the head, before exploding them with a ranged attack. The first attack does bonus damage to sleeping monsters, so the bombs going off simultaneously deal extreme damage. This is a really easy way to break troublesome parts like Diablo's horns and it just does an absurd amount of damage. You want to bring large barrel bombs, preferably mega barrel bombs, into every hunt with you and the ability to mix more if you manage to put a monster to sleep a second time. Dropping barrel bombs on sleeping monsters and blowing them up with a full length dragon piercer is the go-to combo and will deal an absurd amount of damage to every enemy in the game. Also make sure to restock your coatings, bombs, and traps after every hunt. It's especially easy to forget to replace coatings because they won't auto restock if you don't have at least one in your inventory. Now that all that's out of the way, use your Kulu Arrow 1 to take out the Pookie Pookie in the Ancient Forest, then do your mandatory assignments of hunting a Baroth, as well as a Jiratotus in Wildspire Wastes. After those are done, you'll have to hunt a Toby Kadachi. This is the second reasonable bow path for the early game. You lose out on sleep and blast coatings, but gain higher base damage output from higher raw damage and added thunder elemental damage with power coatings. The Toby Kadachi bow path has a bonus to paralysis coatings, so make sure you abuse them. Make a Hunter's Bow 1 and upgrade it to a Hunter's Bow 2 by using 3 Monster Bone S. From there, upgrade it to a Pulsar Bow 1 by using 1 Toby Kadachi Claw, 3 Toby Kadachi Scale, and 2 Toby Kadachi Pelts. Our next hunt is Anjanath. It's moderately weak to lightning, but the ability to sleep bomb and use blast coatings will be extremely beneficial, even though it's resistant to blast buildup. The damage output shot for shot for these bows will be fairly comparable otherwise. Keep going onwards and you'll have to fight Zora Magdaros. After defeating Zora Magdaros, don't worry, it's a set piece and you can't really lose, you'll gain access to the Coral Highlands. In the Coral Highlands, you can mine to get Coral Crystal. Mine three as soon as possible. Once you do, you can upgrade your Pulsar Bow 1 into a Pulsar Bow 2 by using two Toby Kadachi Electrode, three Toby Kadachi Claw, and three Coral Crystal. Continue progressing until you've defeated Palumu. Then you'll descend into the Rotten Veil, take out Rattoban. Rattoban is resistant to sleep, but you can put him under with some effort. However, you will absolutely bully him with blast coatings on the Kulu Arrow 1. This is the last hunt in the game that you should actually use the Kulu Arrow 1. From now on, you should use the Toby Kadachi Bow. Continue progressing, you'll have to take out a Legiana. If you're lucky after your hunt, you'll have the 2 Monster Bone Plus required to upgrade your Pulsar Bow to its final low rank form. Upgrade your Pulsar Bow 2 to Pulsar Bow 3 by using 2 Monster Bone Plus, 2 Toby Kadachi Electrodes, 2 Toby Kadachi Membrane, and 2 Warped Bones. The Warped Bones can be harvested from bone piles in the Rotten Vale. Optionally here, you can also make Legiana's Ice Bow. 
Make an iron bow one and upgrade it to an iron bow two by using three iron ore. Then upgrade it to an aqua arrow one by using three earth crystal, one juratota shell, three juratota scale, and one aqua sack. Now upgrade your aqua arrow one into an aqua arrow two by using five dragonite ore, three juratota's fin, two juratota's fang, and three gajow skin. And finally, use three legiana claw, four legiana scale, and two frost sack to upgrade your aqua arrow two into a glacial arrow one. This bow gains sleep and poison coatings over the Toby bow but loses out on paralysis coatings. Make sure to bring poison coatings with toadstools and sleep coatings with sleep herbs to make more coatings. Also utilize sleep bombing with this bow as we did with the Kulu Arrow 1 at the start of the game. From here, use the Pulsar Bow 3 if the monster is weak to thunder, like Rathalos, and use the Glacial Arrow 1 if the monster is weak to ice, like Diablos. If they're not weak against either of them, use your preference. Pulsar Bow gets paralysis coatings whereas the Glacial Arrow gets sleep and poison coatings. Take out the remaining monsters in low rank, which are Odegaron, Rathalos, and Diablos. Diablos actually has the hardest hitting bow in the game. You can build it here by making a Hunter's Bow 1 and upgrading it to a Hunter's Bone 2 by using 3 Monster Bone S. Then Hunter's Bow 2 to Hunter's Bow 3 by using 2 Monster Bone M and 1 Ancient Bone. Then a Hunter's Stout Bow using 1 Monster Bone L, 5 Monster Bone M, and 2 Boulder Bone. Finally, upgrade it into a Diablos Bow 1 by using 1 Twisted Horn, 2 Diablos Fangs, 4 Diablos Shells, and 3 Monster Bone Plus. The Monster Bone Plus are rewards from hunting 5 star monsters such as like Gianna, Odogaron, Rathalos, and Diablos. The boulder bones can be found in the Wildspire Waste bone piles. Right out the gate, the Diablos bow won't be great, but it will be the most versatile endgame bow, so make sure to build it. Then take on Zora Magdaros. After beating the set piece and killing a deceptively strong Pookie Pookie, you'll gain access to high rank quests. Congratulations, the baby gloves are coming off. Our immediate goal in high rank is a weapon upgrade to compensate for the increased health of monsters. At the start of high rank, you'll be able to free hunt Toby Kadachi and Legiana. Hunt Toby Kadachi first and upgrade your Pulsar Bow 3 into a Kadachi Strike Bow by using 3 Toby Kadachi Claw Plus, 4 Toby Kadachi Scale Plus, 3 Toby Kadachi Pelt Plus, and 3 Dragon Vein Crystal. Dragon Vein Crystal can be found on red mining nodes in the Coral Highlands or Wild Spire Wastes. Use your new Kadachi Strike Bow to hunt Paolumu and Legiana to upgrade your Glacial Arrow 1. You'll need to get Legiana Tail Webbing and a Plate. Make sure to break Legiana's tail for a chance at the webbing and a chance at the plate. Also break its head and back for extra chances at the plate. Then make sure to hunt Paolumu for wings. Once you farm the materials, upgrade your Glacial Arrow 1 into a Glacial Arrow 2 by using 4 Paolumu Wing, 4 Legiana Claw, 3 Legiana Tail Webbing, and 1 Legiana Plate. The Legiana materials are low rank, but the Palumu wings are from high rank. Now you can immediately upgrade this again once you hunt high rank Legiana. Upgrade your Glacial Arrow 2 into a Snow Fletcher by using 3 Legiana Claw Plus, 5 Legiana Scale Plus, 3 Legiana Wing, and 2 Freezer Sack. Now you're situated to take out the remainder of high rank. The final upgrade tier of both of these bows is locked behind beating Nergigante and Kushala Daura. They will be adequate for taking them out. You can choose to progress, or you can use your Snow Fletcher to farm Diablos and Black Diablos. The first upgrade to the Diablos bow only requires Monster Keen Bones from high rank, and then the rest of the materials are low rank. You can get these as rewards from Anjanath, Baroth, Rataban, Pookie Pookie, and Toby Kadachi. After you get some, upgrade your Diablos bow 1 into a Diablos bow 2 by using 4 Monster Keen Bones, 4 Diablos Ridge, 2 Diablos Tail Case, and 1 Diablos Marrow. Now you can actually farm Diablos in high rank to upgrade from the Diablos Bow 2 into a Diablos Coil Bender by using 3 Majestic Horns, 6 Diablos Carapace, 5 Diablos Ridge Plus, and 1 Blos Medulla. After hunting Pink Rathian and actually seeing a Black Diablos, you'll gain access to a repeatable optional quest to farm Black Diablos. Black Diablos is hard, arguably harder than some of the Elder Dragons. This upgrade does become available now, but it may be easier to come back later once you've progressed further into the game. You can upgrade your Diablos Coil Bender into a Gale Bender by using 1 Black Spiral Horn Plus, 2 Black Diablos Ridge Plus, 4 Black Diablos Carapace, and 1 Wyvern Gem. The Wyvern Gem can be carved or as rewards from monsters like Baroth, Juratotus, and Rataban. After hunting Nergigante and hopefully getting Talons, you'll be able to upgrade your weapons to the final tier. Upgrade your Kadachi Strike Bow into a Flying Kadachi Strike Bow by using 2 Nergigante Talon, 4 Toby Kadachi Electrode Plus, 6 Toby Kadachi Claw Plus, and 1 Wyvern Gem. The Wyvern Gem again can be obtained from Baroth, Juratotus, and Rataban. At this point you can also farm Nergigante to make his weapon, the Nurgle Whisper. It requires going through the ore tree from Iron Bow 1, to Iron Bow 2, to Iron Bow 3, to Steel Bow 1, to Steel Bow 2, to Steel Bow 3, to Alloy Bow 1, and finally to the Nurgle Whisper. Congratulations, you now have a weapon that's completely capable of getting you through the rest of the game. 
For final targets, you can upgrade your Snow Fletcher into a Legia Snow Fletcher after beating Kushala Daura by using two Daura Claw Plus, five Legiana Claw Plus, five Legiana Hide Plus, and one Legiana Gem. The gem will take some farming, but hopefully you're lucky. You can upgrade the Nurgle Whisper further into Doom's Shaft once you've cleared out the other Elder Dragons and fought Xenojiva. You can also upgrade the Gale Bender into a Sarah Coil Bender after beating Xenojiva. This is by far and wide the hardest hitting bow in the game and will be excellent for general purpose hunting when you have the gear set up to offset the negative affinity and get the non-elemental boost decorations. Thanks for watching. If you thought this video was helpful, please consider subscribing to the channel. Guides for the rest of the weapons are on the way.